This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, everyone. Uh, welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Um, this is a show that's sponsored partially by the Hawaii Energy uh, Policy Forum, of which I am a member. And uh, during my day job, uh, I'm with the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, where I'm the uh, Hydrogen Systems Program Manager. So on our show today, we have uh, two guests. Uh, first is uh, Shannon Tanganan from uh, Hawaii Electric, a spokesperson. And she's going to tell us all the good things that Hawaii uh, Electric is uh, doing uh, to support our, uh, the mainland uh, disaster relief effort uh, that, uh, in California. And I also have uh, Kevin uh, Davies from HNEI, who works in our grid, uh, our grid Start program, and he's going to talk about how we can get more PV on the grid. But first of all, Shannon's going to tell us about the really neat and good things that Hawaiian Electric's doing to help the, uh, the, our fellow citizens on the mainland. Yeah, um, we we're responding, we're answering a call for help from our uh, member utility of the um, Western Region Mutual Assistance Group. So what it is is a lot of utilities in the Western Region um, of the United States that really answer the call when one utility is having, you know, issues as far as right now California is, you know, recovering from a deadly and most destructive fire, the campfire. Yep. So we've sent 30 employees um, crews from Hawaiian Electric, Maui Electric, and Hawaii Electric Light are linemen. Right. And so they're up there now. They arrived Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They arrived Monday and got orient through orientation and getting set up. And today I think they're actually doing work out there to help with rebuild infrastructure. That's really great. So yeah. what other benefits uh, accrue to Hawaii? I mean, what, you know, what's, uh, what's, what's the, uh, some of the benefits that, by, by our setting, apart from yeah. helping our fellow citizens in need. Yeah, uh, well, we're definitely bringing aloha to um, California, to Butte County. We're also gaining valuable experience. Um, the crews are learning a lot. They're going to be working in conditions that, you know, that they don't experience here. And so that's right. always a good thing to experience uh, you know, and learn new skills. Right. They're also... Um, what it does for us is, you know, we're answering the call uh, right. when when we, we need when California needs help. Right. So if we ever, you know, God forbid, have a uh, catastrophic event here, right. we we know that we can count on utilities such as PG and E to also help us in return. That's really great. So, what's the projected? How long do we think they're going to be over there? Is there any they timeline? They agreed to three weeks, but wow. at that, you know, at that point, we'll just have to assess whether they still need help, you right. know, whether we'll rotate crews out. It, it's still unclear, but they've committed to three weeks. Yeah, so that's going to be pretty hot and potentially that might be even a little bit of danger still there, yes? Actually, it's more the cold. Oh, that, really? Yeah, because oh. it's, it's Northern California, and oh, so right. it's conditions that our crews aren't necessarily, you know, used to, yeah. so they had to be um, outfitted with, you know, cold weather gear. And, we wouldn't even yeah. have thought of that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, Let's go to the beach today, exactly. guys. Exactly. So, yeah, they, is, they're getting used to a lot of different experiences. Okay. Yeah. So is there anything else that you want to say, or is that pretty well the message? I think that's the message. I mean, okay. you know, we wanted to answer the call for help, and right. yeah, we're getting a lot of good response from our community as well sure. because you know we are you know bringing the aloha spirit to butte county so many people have lost so much oh, there yeah. so it's real tragedy we're trying to help them recover rebuild right. um try to get them back to some kind of normal normalcy yeah good well thank you very much thank and you thank you uh, hawaii electric for doing that and Thanks. you know also the uh, the other island neighbor island uh, electric utility Definitely. so it's great great thank to hear you. we're doing that kind of thing so thank you so Kevin, uh, first of all, um, 
Where are you from and why are you here? Why did you come in by here? I know why you're here is because I put the arm on you to come to the show, but why are you in Hawaii? And well, what's I've, your background? Um, well, I've had a long journey through um, engineering. Um, I grew up in Virginia, I went to school in Pennsylvania, um, worked for four years at Ford Motor Company um, in Detroit. Really? Um, on alternative fuel vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had you know, product development type background there. And then I felt like I wanted to really dig in more in the research, you know, and I always wanted my career to be about renewable energy. And, right. uh, you know, I've had an opportunity to work um, with Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. Um, along the way, I got a PhD at Georgia Tech. I've been now uh, in, the, in the grid integration group at HNEI. So we deal with trying to support um, the integration of more renewable energy um, from a research angle to help, you know, achieve Hawaii's goals towards towards that. So how long have you been here, Kevin? Uh, for five years. Yeah, yeah. you got yeah. that little break when you went off to get your PhD. I remember when you left. <laughs> Did I you was call like, that a break? <laughs> I said, man, this is a really good guy. I sure hope he comes back. And thank you for coming back and helping us out. And we'll talk a little bit more. I think we're going to head for a break right now. And when we come back from the break, you can tell us about all the great things you're doing uh, here in Hawaii and at the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. So thank here we you. go. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. We're going to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. A try a little more, hard and every more, let's do what we can. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens the uh, host of Cyber Underground uh, every Friday here at 1 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. And then every episode is uploaded to the Cyber Underground, that library of shows that you can see of mine on youtube.com. And uh, I hope you'll join us here every Friday. We have some topical discussions about why security matters and what could scare the absolute bejesus out of you if you just try to watch my show all the way through. Hope to see you next time on the Cyber Underground. Stay safe. Aloha again. Here we are back from our uh, short break, and I have with me uh, Kevin Davies from the Hawaiian, uh, Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. Uh, he works on microgrid projects, and he's going to tell us potentially how we can uh, get more PV onto our grid, which is something we want to do to meet uh, Hawaii's uh, clean energy goals. So, Kevin, tell us about some of your projects and yeah. your progress. Thank you. Yeah. So, for the last two years or so um, within our group, at, uh, at the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, we've been focusing on um, you know, better data acquisition. Mm -hmm. So part of our research, you know, of course, is gathering data that allows us to do the analysis that we need to do to, to help you know, integrate more you know, renewable energy. And so along the way, you know, we used a lot of commercial off-the-shelf technology. Yeah. We saw gaps in, in what we could achieve with that. You know, mm -hmm. We had deployments to Maui um, for, for years, you know, gathering data, but you know, there's, some of the data didn't come back the way it, it should have. And at that point, we realized how much cost was going into acquiring this equipment, and it still wasn't doing what we wanted it to do. Right. So at that point, two years ago, we decided, hey, let's try to, try to build something ourselves. You know, to, what I'm talking about is gr gather more data from the grid at the distribution level, so the neighborhood type level. Right. Um, more information on the voltage and current and electrical parameters of what's going on when there's lots of PV. Right. right. And so that kind of developed as its own project, you know, along the way. Now we've had the opportunity to go for more funding from federal government um, to help develop that more. There's been more commercial interest in what we're yeah. doing. So it's kind of getting some of its own momentum. And uh, along the way, we've had a lot of good work to be able to, you know, work on electrical engineering, the programming. We involved a lot of students from the University of Hawaii. Um, so it's been a real learning experience, and, and, and I think it's been, been valuable. But the end game is that we're trying to gather more information about the state of the grid in a very fast you know, uh, manner so that we can um, do our research, but then also support the utility with integrating more rooftop right. PV. And uh, how did you do that? I mean, what, what trends? I mean, you saw the gap mm -hmm. and the need. Yeah. And so what did you develop to fill that gap and meet the need? Yeah, so we, uh, you know, we ended up developing a device that, that you know, circuit board level, you know, 
integrated circuits, you know, the, the full, full range of electrical engineering and computer engineering and, and all that to, right. to develop the device. So it has wireless communications, it has data acquisition, it has GPS, you know, timing. All, all in that um, little device? Yeah, yeah. It's, really? it's, it's amazing the amount of technology that now is, is you know, coming about that you have availability. One of the sort of trends right now is this um, Internet of Things sort of revolution where, yeah. you know, right now we have computers that are all on the Internet, our, our cell phones are all on the Internet, but now it's going down more to the smaller devices that mm -hmm. now can be connected to the Internet. So there's a lot of um, hardware technology that's out there for that. There's a lot of software that's open source. It's, it's amazing how much has come about so that allows us to, to make a really small device that has a, 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 a really amazing amount of computational ability. So now we're going, you know, our research is always to take it to the next level and not yeah. just monitoring the information, but actually um, do computation on site to do certain analysis at high speed, report back the analyzed data, not just the raw data, right. but then also eventually go into the con area of control. So if this device is out there at the u utility poles, it's right there where it can you know, eventually communicate with EV inverters, batteries, you know, EVs, things that are on the grid and allow yeah. better connectivity. Right. So, so will the homeowners see any of this uh, data or is it all come back to the grid? I, I think the, well, right now we, we have our own website from within HNEI that, you yeah. know, is publicly available. But, but um, from a research standpoint, you know, our, our data will probably come out as publications, as you know, right. a journal, that sort of thing. But then, um, you know, with some projects that we're proposing now with the government, we would more than likely have a, a public-facing website that allows you to at least see some of the data coming in. There is, you know, an issue with balancing between confidentiality and, right. uh, you know, if you're, our data is not at the home level. It's okay. at the transformer level, okay. but you have you know five to ten houses on on that transformer, so you it's a little bit of sensitivity that if you're if you're publishing that real time information, you know there could be information that people don't want to have disclosed. Right, right, right. right. So what's the status right now? I mean, so you have your uh, your I, I used to, I would have called it a black box, except <laughs> it's not. It's a white box. Yeah. Um, can that first of all can that be um, shrunk more? Do you think is it, this is yeah. like a, like a brass board or a working prototype? Is yeah. That, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. It, it it could be shrunk more. That's not our major um, emphasis okay. at this point because this our major you know target is to install this on the transformers, right? Right. So the big big metal cans that you sell from the, on the telephone poles. Okay. That, that's where we're putting it, and and at that point the size of something like this is is not. A sure. big of an issue. The bigger issue is making sure it's easy to install and reliable. It it handles the weather properly. It handles the temperature right. properly. Yeah. Um, utility doesn't have to go up and maintain it because that's a really expensive thing. Sure. Right. Yeah. And those those sorts of the things are more the stuff we're working on now, like making sure all that is tested out well. Along with that, you know, the the thing has a lot of software in it. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, like we program that software, we test it in a lab. What's to say that, you know, in a month we might want to do something a little different with it, you know, right. program it a little differently, grab a little bit of different data, you sure. know, all kinds of things, or yeah. we might find a bug in our software. So we need the capability to remotely configure and adjust that software, or do updates, as well as maintain security, right? Sure. You know, there's a whole area of cybersecurity concerns, right. right? Especially with the grid, now that more and more connected devices are on the grid, you know, on one hand, that allows more controllability, which is good, mm -hmm. but, it brings with it more risk, right? So, have you deployed any of these in the field yet? Are they yeah, up and running? Yeah, we have we have a few running. One's you know on University of Hawaii campus in a, a zero net energy building. Um, another is uh, at Arizona State University. We have a research program oh, with really? them. We have one running with them. We will we, we'll be delivering ten in all. Um, we have interest that soon we're, we'll be working with um, Alaska uh, University, of Alaska. Right. Um, so in a cold climate. Yeah, they're very interested in, um, up there, there's a bunch of remote villages, right, right, that have power outages due to, you know, weather conditions, due to lack of fuel, due to all kinds of things. Sure. And they had developed their own device to, to monitor some things, but, and they were kind of going this direction with their technology, but we realized that, hey, we could, we could give what we have to them and work with them and develop it further. So, you know, over the next couple of months, we plan to get it there. 
there, we're beginning to talk to utility more and more, so there may be, there, it looks like there could be some possibilities for pilot projects there. Um, you know, and of course, through to the University of Hawaii, we look at technology transfer, right? Because the sure. University of Hawaii owns this technology, they'd like to get it out there. Right. So have you applied for any patents or yeah, patent protection? Yeah, we, we now have a patent pending um, okay. as of about a week ago. Um, so, you know, of course, that's a long process as, as you know, the patent office reviews it and then right. reviews the claims and then back and forth. But it, we'll, we'll get some sort of patent out of that. Um, and then... Uh, so you know, potentially you have a product yeah. that uh, you could sell or the university right. could sell and, and uh, have a royalty stream coming back to the university. Yeah, the way it usually works is the university is not in the business of building or manufacturing things, Correct. right? And we typically do the front end research. So we might be developing you know, the tech core technology, mm -hmm. but then it usually would get, almost always would get spun off, spun off to another outside company. It could be a startup, it could be a large company, but there's some agreement through the technology transfer office at the URCY that um, they're maybe paying some upfront money for that ability to exclusive or non-exclusive license to that technology, right. as well as some ongoing royalties out of Right. And that all depends on case-by-case case sure. basis. Yeah. But the bottom line is the university can recoup some expenses, and right. if it really takes off, actually make money. I mean, the university right. would right. like to make money to support right. the university research program and right. just all the infrastructure we have up at the university. So that, exactly. that's a really good thing that yeah. you know, researchers like you are being entrepreneurial yeah. and, and uh, are looking at uh, products that you know, are marketable, there's a market for them out there in the marketplace. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's really good. It's pretty, pretty neat to be able to bridge the gap between something that's useful for research, yeah. which is our main business, and then to be able to see that it does meet a need in, in, in the real world, which is kind of my goal with it all along, and it looks like it, it has some traction, of course, a long way to go, but, but it, it's, it's kind of neat to be exploring that. Yeah. So talk to us about your initial results. Is, is that something you can talk about? Yeah, I mean, well, we have a graphic there. I think it's the, the second okay. graphic on, I think it's, I called it interface. Um, okay. And, and that's just showing, you know, uh, uh, some screenshots from our, um, from our website, basically. So, so which graphic would you want to, do you want to show that one now? Or do you want yeah, to, do if you they have, have available, the, the, uh, the, interface, um, the interface slide. And it basically shows where we have our web portal that, then allows us to see which devices are connected, and then... Okay. Um, Let's have a look at that slide. Yeah. It's slide two, correct? Yeah. So this is just some screen captures of what we have going on. It's just a, up in the upper left is sort of an index page of which devices we have connected and their status, whether they're green or red, meaning connected or disconnected. Mm -hmm. And of course, right now, we're in a lot of research stage, so we break things a lot and they get yeah. disconnected and whatever. Right. But, but um, and this is not live, but this is a screen capture. The upper right, you have sort of a, a dashboard type mode where it shows the, um, the 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 frequency and the voltage in this case, and many other things off the screen there. So it says frog. What's what's that? Mean? <laughs> the frog is is the name of a, a a building on the UH campus. It's it's the there's two buildings that were I believe the manufacturer is actually named Frog. Frog, yeah. And and they are zero net energy buildings um, installed by the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, yeah. and so. You know, our colleague was able to, you know, allow us to install the, the device right. there and, and prove it out. So. Yeah, on a previous show, we highlighted yeah. uh, the, the frog buildings, but I wanted the people out in the audience <laughs> see, see to the connection. saw a frog, like, what, what's that mean, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, so each device has a, has a name or a, yeah. a tag associated with it. And so we're able to get data that's both historical as well as real-time updated, right. you know, in a lot higher fidelity than what we could otherwise get, meaning that it's sampled a lot quicker, it's, um, it has a lot more information behind it about harmonic information as well mm -hmm. as fundamental. It you know, allows us to do a lot more research out of it, and we believe that's valuable ultimately to the utility because as they try to integrate more rooftop PV, they need to have that information to, to know the state of the grid better. So specifically, if you can get a little bit more specific without mm -hmm. you know, going sure. too, tech, too high tech on it. So. Sure. How do they actually do that? I mean, you know, right what's the process? The utility sees this information, what do they do? They, how, how do they respond to that? How can we add more PV based on the information that's coming out of your, your device? Right, right. So right now, you know, when people apply to have rooftop PV installed, of course they have to follow one of the interconnection, you know, 
agreement, CGS Plus, or CG, you know, one of the one of the the agreements that's that's worked out between Hawaiian Electric and the PUC, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there there's you know a study by the by the by the Hawaiian Natural by the the um, Hawaiian Electric to make sure that that installation is not going to cause issues with the grid right. in terms of voltage issues or or overloading you know too much current through the through the wires that are there, and then you know then if it's approved the the, the customer can go ahead and install that that, that PV um, without more information the utility needs to be a bit more conservative about that right, right. so so it, typically the university or the Hawaiian Electric does not have you know monitors on the transformers to know whether they're violating their limits or not right I see. they have to you know know by the engineering specs of what's been installed and the specs of the transformer and not that they're they do have information on it but it's not real time high fidelity information on the actual conditions right? so they have to build in the big safety margins, right, I would right, imagine, right. correct yeah so you could imagine that if if there's more information there higher fidelity information then those margins can be be, be, be reduced down a bit. right and you can you know if if we start to do controls through this system mm -hmm. then you can there's the concept of non wires alternative in the grid so the utility has a lot of infrastructure, right? right. Wires and transformers and poles, and those um, that, that that wiring was in large part developed way before there's PV on the grid, right? Yeah. And so, as people want more PV, you know, there's I guess it's the options on the table. Do you do you upgrade all that, right? right. And, but that's enormous money, right? right. The I, the idea of non wires alternatives is that you're using smart devices that are controllable to help reroute power. And defer power transfer so that it maintains within the limits without needing to have costly, you know, new copper and new transformers installed. You know. So it's going to save a lot of money. Yeah. It's going to allow more PV on the grid. Right. Once everybody builds up a confidence level that this really works. Right. So do you have any feel for? I mean, I know this is a tough <laughs> question. Just ballpark. I mean, like. How much extra PV do you think uh, we could put on the grid? <laughs> you know, that's, that's a really tough one. I might like get myself in trouble too. Or, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, flip, flip side, right? Like okay. I look at, you know, when you fly in and out Hawaii, yeah. you know that you see that there's a lot of PV roofs, roofs right? Yeah. But think about how many roofs don't have PV. Every and time how I many fly people in the airport, have it, I right? see all these warehouses around the airport right. that don't right. have any right. PV on them. And when you look at, you know, our goals in Hawaii are to achieve 100% renewable energy. Yeah. Do we want to do that by using up land with more and more central PV? Or do we want to at least first try to maximize what we can get out of our rooftops, which is already developed, already, you know, built up, you know, infrastructure right. that, that is, to me, waiting for more PV. But... You know, the other side is a utility, you know, struggles with that because it's not in the the, the grid wasn't designed for that, right? right? And 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 so we're kind of stuck, you know. And, and technology like this, I think, you know, at least provides an option to no no one technology is going to break, you know, fix that. But every little piece helps, you know. And sure. So you know, that's our that's our contribution at this point that we're working on. Have you had any interface with some of the uh, solar installation companies? The See what their read is on this. Um, yeah, we 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 scoped out uh, a proposal with you know Sunrun as one mm -hmm. of the, the installers, and they definitely were interested in our technology. Um, that particular proposal proposal didn't go through, but we definitely have those connections and that dialogue. And and everybody has their own technology take on exactly what infrastructure to go where and which new devices. And and that's research. That's that's science. That's engineering. Right. That nobody knows the one path, but everybody tries, and it all kind of you know, eventually goes the right direction, but it's right. kind of a, a messy process okay. sometimes. So we have about three minutes remaining in the show. I told yeah. you it was going to go fast. <laughs> so are there any other things that I haven't asked the right question about that you think uh, we need to know? Yeah. Um, no, or just, that you wanted to talk about? Just, just want to emphasize that, you know, Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, we're really trying to focus on the right issues to, mm -hmm. to really push renewable energy in Hawaii. And uh, we work really hard at it. We're we're um, trying to be innovative, pull in new technology, and uh, and it's it's an exciting time for Hawaii with all the all the need that we have to try to achieve higher penetration of renewable energy. Right. It's it's a it's a difficult, multifaceted problem. We got you know the engineering, the social aspects, the business, the you know it's all coming together with 
you know, utility, research, you know, government. It's, it's a really complicated problem. So it's, it's exciting to be able to be an engineer in, in, in the middle of that. You know? right. And the expense. I mean, you know, right. we have limited, but everybody's got a limited budget. Mm -hmm. And so if you can save yeah. a lot of money, and that translates back to the rate payers by not having to replace all the wires, I mean, right. that's, that's a really good thing. Yeah. 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 Well, Kevin, we're at the end of the show. <laughs> I told you it would go fast. So I really appreciate you coming yeah. down. Thank you. So thank you so Thanks much. So and uh, that's it for our show uh, today. And I thank uh, all of you out there in TV land for uh, your attention to this. And I hope you found it worthwhile. So aloha, everyone. And